Arena, home of the Seton Hall Pirates. Tonight, three seniors bid farewell to home court. The Pirates are upset-minded in their second meeting with the Pitt Panthers, who are on a major roll. They're top ten for the first time in a decade. from Continental Airlines Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. It's Big East basketball on a Tuesday night. Tonight, eighth rank in the country, the Pittsburgh Panthers arrive to take on the Seton Hall Pirates. Hi, everybody. Mike Crispino along with Jim Spinarco. First time these two met, just a five-point win by Pitt at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, where they're 14-1, and one, so they're going to be awfully tough, and they have an outstanding point guard in Brandon Knight. Well, he's clearly a candidate for Big East Player of the Year. He's had a spectacular regular season for them, and one of the things he does so well is puts the ball on the floor and really will attack at the offensive end. He can knock back the jumper, averaging 15 points a game and also seven assists per game. But defensively is what makes Pitt really a tough out. He gets the basketball, goes down the floor, but that's really what makes him a difficult team. Obviously, they want to control the tempo defensively. They're one of the top 10 teams in the country on defense, and Brandon Knight currently ninth in the conference and I should say in the country in assists. Now, as for Seton Hall, Charles Mangan, Darius Lane, Ty Shine, all seniors playing their final game here at home. It's going to be emotional. Well, it will be an emotional night for them, and obviously they've put a lot of long years in here at Seton Hall, and they've done very, very well. But the future is bright for Louis Orr and company. On the left, Andre Barrett. On the right, John Allen. They have both put up nice numbers this year, and clearly they will look ahead to next year and really hopefully help Louis Orr's squad. When you look at Andre Barrett, his shooting has improved from long range. The last two games in particular, he's knocking back 20 points a night. And defensively, they're pretty tough also. Come down the floor, Allen and Barrett back and forth. So these two players are guys that have to play well tonight and try to control the tempo against Pitt. Pirates are top 25 in terms of threes made per game, but they're going to have to rebound to beat this Pittsburgh team. Jerron Brown leads the attack on the glass for Pitt. It's Seton Hall and the Panthers next. Hungry? is being brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Cooper Tires, a lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires drive on. Hyundai, where driving is believing. Come test drive the full lineup of exciting new cars at your local Hyundai dealer today. Welcome back to Continental Airlines Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Seton Hall Pirates fans on hand to honor their graduating seniors tonight on senior night. The starting lineups for Pitt Panthers, as you can see on the left, Ron Zavachkis, Morris, Julius Page, and Brandon Knight, a dynamic backcourt. As for Seton Hall, Greg Morton, John Allen up front, Charles Manga, Darius Lane, and Andre Barrett in the backcourt for the Pirates. Ben Howland has done a terrific job at Pittsburgh last year 19 and 4 their best year in a decade and this year 23 and 4 Louis Orr his second year as a head coach on the college level 32 and 26 after a 20 and 11 mark at Siena last year 12 and 5 5 and 9 in the big conference and Seton Hall wins the opening tip it's Andre Barrett the down low to Charles Manga is taken away by Pittsburgh, and they've got the ball. Pretty good matchup at the point right here. This way going Barrett on Knight. Wasn't that way. Page was basically playing Barrett at the other end, though, so we'll watch this at the offensive end here for Knight. Seton Hall trying to snap a four-game losing streak. Pittsburgh, meanwhile, has won five in a row. Seven of their last 11, and on the hard drive, he got it to drop Julius Page. A good start for Page just then. Really the lefty going towards the right-hand side of the floor. Making things happen there, getting the baseline side. Here's Manga down on the low box. Turn around, hook, no good. And the rebound taken down by the big man, Tori Morris. The 6'10 sophomore from Pensacola, Florida, J.C. transfer. Louis Orr is going to have to figure out a way to make sure Page doesn't come along the baseline. Quick dart type move. Corner jump from Brandon Knight is an air ball rebounded by Darius Lane. 
And another turnover by Seton Hall. Two early turnovers. Ball taken away by Jerron Brown. And now it's Knight inside in traffic, and it's taken away by the Pirates. John Allen will hold it up, and they'll restart their offense. Well, both times the Pirates have tried to go down low, and now they go out deep to Barrett. Andre Barrett for three. I guess they figure they can't get the ball. And they're forcing a couple of times down the first two possessions. Nobody at all within three or four feet of Barrett, so he figured, well, let me take a shot. He's really been playing well over the last couple of games. One of the highlights of the Pittsburgh season last year under Ben Holland was sweeping Seton Hall when they were ranked 15th in the country. Of course, Eddie Griffin was part of that team. And they won the earlier game this year, 70 to 65 at Pittsburgh. So they've taken three in a row from the Hall, seven of the last 11. Pretty good job here by the Hall defensively, too. Good strong man-to-man -man pressure. And they are just about going to beat the buzzer. They do. The rebound to Andre Barrett. Ahead to John Allen, and he led him just a little too far. Uh, three out of four possessions now with the turnovers. Uh, so Seton Hall not getting enough shots early on right here. Louis Orr's squad, Louis Orr's squad is trying to push the ball as much as possible. Uh, that's a number they can't live with early on, three to one. Seton Hall has dropped four in a row. Georgetown, Illinois, Syracuse, and at Rutgers. So they're hoping to snap out of that here tonight against the eighth ranked team in the country and Pittsburgh can't save it so a sloppy start for the Panthers. Ben Howland not happy with the way this is starting out for him. The defensive effort by Seton Hall has been pretty good and not bad defensively by Pitt. That's what's really made them a real tough team. They're just a tough out defensively but I question some of the moves that Seton Hall has thrown and some of the passes in particular to start this game. On the back door, another turnover by the Pirates. That's four. It's hard to win basketball games if you don't get shots off. That is an understatement. Thank you, Jim Spinarkle. <laughs> and on the baseline, a nice jumper that time by Torrey Morris. Pittsburgh by one, four to three. Nice little post-up move there because he was under control and really squared himself up to get a good look. There's another dish down low. One thing Seton Hall has been doing, they've been trying to get it to Manga a couple of times now, but clearly Seton Hall's game plan is to try to get the ball down low into the paint area about five feet or so away from the basket. Here's Morris down low. Watch him take that right foot and plant it good. Turns, squares to the bucket. Nice little follow through. Tough shot. Darius Lane knocks down a three. Well, clearly Seton Hall is a different team when Lane is knocking back his long range shot. You know, but he's also a streaky shooter. So now Pitt the next couple of times down the floor will have to keep an eye on him and really keep a body on him so he doesn't get hot. Pirates are averaging eight three pointers a game. That's 25th in the country. Nice dish down low to Morris, but he missed the shot. Manga has the carom. Pretty good help by Morton, too, defensively as Barrett pushes. Barrett to John Allen. Allen deals it back to Barrett, and they'll start over again. Lane. Just under four minutes gone here in the first half. Seton Hall leading, and another turnover. And a little bounce pass there gets the job done. Go over the top defensively. Guys could just are too athletic to go by. Lane knocked it out of the hands of Brandon Knight. Knight from nearby East Orange, Saint, uh, Seton Hall Prep, a junior. Brother Brevin, of course, in the NBA. Good show there by Manga. Really taken away by the Pirates, and they've got a steal, so an active defense by Seton Hall. Here's Barrett, and Brandon Knight fouled him on the way in. We've come to our first timeout of the night 15 20 left in the first the pirates by two over eighth ranked pittsburgh welcome back to continental airlines arena in east rutherford new jersey let's take a moment to thank our corporate partner cooper tire proud to be the official tire of the big east conference cooper tires drive on Mike Crispino along with Jim Spinarco and a sloppy beginning to this one, Jim. Eight turnovers by the two teams in the opening four minutes. Uh, there's a look at the turnovers and the shot selection, you know, has been okay for Seton Hall down the other end, but they're just not getting enough shots with their possessions. And Louis Orr 
I'm sure was speaking about that during this break with his squad. Good cut there by Manga to the basket. Manga couldn't get a shot off. And he does get a pass off to Greg Morton, whose little step back jumper is good. Well, they're making the best of their shot attempts, though. What are they, three for four now early on? And then most guys getting some good touches also. The Vodka shot is no good off the front rim, rebounded by the Pirates, and Barrett might have got away with the travel. Here's Lane down low to lay it up. I think he did also, and Pitt's going to talk it over again for a short period of time right now, but Louis Earl's squad getting a little better life that time. Defensively, really playing tough, and Barrett comes down the floor, a little fake by Lane, let the player go by and finish it off. Here comes Barrett once again. Good delivery. Knight goes by, wants to avoid that foul, goes for a quick strip, but Lane finishing it off, and all of a sudden you look up. And Lane and company has put 10 points on the board and uh, shooting the ball pretty well at four for five from the floor and still doing a good job defensively with Pitt, holding them down to 33%. We talked about it before the game, uh, whether or not Pittsburgh would be motivated. I mean, they've clinched everything they need in the conference, basically. Seton Hall has nothing to lose. Well, the NIT is almost out of the picture unless they make a tremendous run in the Big East Tournament. So how were they going to play emotionally? This is senior night. You have to expect the Pirates are going to have a little extra. Well, Pitt has to fake themselves out. Part of playing basketball night in and night out, you know, you get some games like this that maybe on the schedule is, doesn't appear to be motivation, but you have to come out and find it. Brandon Knight off the screen missed it. Two rebounds by the Pirates, or rather by the Panthers, and finally a foul called. Chad Johnson, the senior, got the ball in the paint, and he got hacked, so Seton Hall did not box out effectively. Greg Morton with the reach in that trip. And there's going to be the second foul on Morton. On Charles Manga, rather. And Seton Hall into their zone defense. 10-4. A little bit of a lead. They'll try to kick this basketball out to the perimeter and force Pitt to knock some shots back early. Johnson couldn't get it off. Had to hand it back to Page. I'm going to let Brandon Knight's jumper is good, and that's a three-point field goal. That's good work by Pitt, too. Against the zone, you want to try to find the free-throw lane area and a good release and cross pass there by Lett. Barrett kicks to lane. Now John Allen. Lane from way downtown, front rimmed it. Morton ran it down. And it's knocked off his knee, so Pittsburgh has possession. You take a look at Pitt down the offensive end. And let with that good release pass, look at the rotation. Knight really caught that thinking shot. Tommy Lopes with the call behind him for a three-point knock knockdown. And it's the first one of the night for Pitt. Seton Hall still has their two on the board, but Defensively, they're coming now with a little bit of a trap at half court. Seat Hall. Pittsburgh, a 33% shooting team from behind the arc. Get a man open on the left wing. Down low, shot blocked. And a pretty good collapse there out of that trap from half court. Corner jumper is no good, but Johnson got his own rebound. Dealt it inside the let. Count the field goal. And he'll get a free throw. Ontario let the junior got loose for the moment in the paint and hey, converted. Look. You look at the size of him, and he really parked himself well and stayed underneath the basket. Rebound comes in, and let's just stand in there, ready for it to just finish it off. And a good delivery by Johnson there with the follow-up of his own missed shot. Cannot complete the three-point play. Ontario let. It's 10-9. Panthers down by one. Here's Lane. Kicks back to Barrett to shoot for three. Rolls in and out. Battle on the boards. And Brandon Knight's out ahead of the field for the easy layup. Yeah, he snuck out when that shot went up by Barrett. He kind of cleared. And just fortunately for him, Pitt got that rebound because Seton Hall was a factor in the offensive glass. Brandon Knight has five points. And the 7-0 answer by Pittsburgh to the 7-0 earlier run by Seton Hall. And a little jump hook in the lane. By Damian Frey. He's just jumping over people. That's a good little set, though, there. I mean, that's an effective move. He catches the ball down on the blocks and can jump over people. So maybe not a bad number to come back to it. 12-11, the Pirates by one. 
And Aaron's pass ends up staying Pittsburgh's way. Substitutions coming up. Marcus Toniel. That makes a whole lot of sense. If you can position yourself with an easy catch, and if you can jump. Now watch the left foot there with the plant. It goes way up quickly and high to just extend. I mean, that's a pretty much unstoppable move if you're going to allow that catch. Maybe the next time down against Frey, you put an arm around them and go three-quarter around to defend and force that ball away from the blocks. It's much too easy for Seton Hall offensively. Number 21, Mark McCarroll, the freshman from Queens. Out of Milford Academy up in Connecticut has just entered the game for Pittsburgh. And Lewis Orr continues to change defenses around. Nice hands by Lane. Ball is loose, and once again, now with four seconds to shoot, the Panthers will have it on the inbounds. It's good communication from Ben Howell and his coaching staff to let them know that there's four left. Plenty of time to get a shot off, though. And they do from the corner. That's no good off the front rim and a rebound on a loose ball from Ontario Lett. Now, those are the ones that really break your back if you're Seton Hall. You force the ball outside, you have to find a way to rebound. Pittsburgh has six offensive rebounds. The Hall, none right now. Here's Ontario Lett handing to Johnson, who threw up an air ball. Ball is knocked loose. It will be Pittsburgh's ball when we return. There's timeout on the court. 11.49 remaining in the first half. Louis Orr's team down by one. Why are more and more people test driving them? Eighth-ranked Pittsburgh fell behind 10-4 early, but now have a one-point lead. Mike Crispino, Jim Spinargo back in New Jersey. And Boston College shocked everyone last season as they completed their remarkable turnaround from worst to first in the conference before going on to win the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden. Don't miss the chance to be part of this year's exciting tournament at the Garden in New York, Wednesday the 6th of March through Saturday the 9th to obtain tickets to the ConAgra Foods 2002 Big East Men's Basketball Championship. Call the Garden Ticket Office at 212-465-MSG1 or contact Ticketmaster. Back underway as the Panthers have bounced back after a slow start. Try to win their 24th game of the season. 25 is a school record. That happened twice in the history of the University of Pittsburgh. Let tonight to shoot for three. No good. Rebounded by Marcus Toniel. One of the things Seton Hall has to do a good job of. In the first game when these teams played, 53-41 to 41 in favor of Pitt was the rebounding number. And they got 21 offensive rebounds. So the board's a big factor. Wow, what a move on the baseline by Damian Frey. He flushes it one hand. It's off the floor in a hurry. And also with Frey, he's got that nice long wingspan, which helps him to get to the rim a lot quicker as Seton Hall comes back with another trap. He's just a sophomore out of Huntington, New York, Walt Whitman High School, and a foul on Ontario Lett. Or it's going to be, yes, Ontario Lett. Here comes Frey once again. It'll square up this time. Get Lett moving. He just finishes it off. Goes around the bigger fellow with his quickness. And so far, Seton Hall yeah, knocking back at 40%. And Pitt just cannot find the outside. So that's why we will see a bunch of zone defensive attempts here by Seton Hall defensively. Force Pitt to get on track. Frey averages only three points a game. He's got two baskets already in brief time for four points. And he's just a sophomore. Ty Shine bangs it off the glass. Pittsburgh there for the rebound. Julius Page. That's one of the things Seton Hall has had a problem with this year. It's taking that quick three from long range. Page, no good. Devotka's got the rebound. Kicks it back out to Brandon Knight. That's a good kick. You get the fresh clock. Another offensive set here, so re regroup a little bit. Seton Hall holding to a one-point lead. Brandon Knight tried to drive by Barrett, couldn't get it done. Zavatkis, it's no good, and this time is a foul down low on the blocks as Ty Shine had his man tied up, Jerron Brown. Fortunately for Ty Shine, though, Brown's pretty strong at 6'4 and 225, and uh, Louis Orr's point guard, Ty Shiner, one of the point guards out there, because he and Barrett both are interchangeable, just couldn't handle the stronger Brown down on the blocks in the offensive end. Another set for Pitt. Pittsburgh enjoying their best year since 73-74. Julius Page, no good, and Frey got the rebound. And Page just waited until he caught that basketball and then started into his shot. If you're going to shoot that one, you might as well start thinking shot beforehand. And Frey whistled for a travel. 
Pittsburgh one for 10 from behind the arc. They're, as I said, they're a 33% shooting team from that range. And one of the things Seton Hall has done a, a very good job of early on here as they go over the top to get some numbers coming down the other way. And they beat the press and able to convert. It's Donatus Zivatkis, the junior, his first two. He averages 11 a game. Seton Hall back with an answer. It's Andre Barrett. And each trip down the floor, Seton Hall has been trying to switch defenses. Here they go again, but Pitt going over the top again. You generally get numbers if you go quickly. Page on the floor, try to call a timeout, and they give it to him. Such a tough call to make right there. I'm not so sure Page had that timeout before he had possession and Seton Hall player came in. Trying to tie him up. Here they come down again. Pitt, a quick release, three on two break, and that's all because they got the first pass past the double team down at the other end of the floor with Seton Hall's full court defensive pressure. Siobhan Troutman got credited with that assist, a nice pass on that last fast break. So Ben Howland with 23 wins, looking for number 24 tonight. This game is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. We're glad you can join us from Continental Airlines Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Next week, the Big East Tournament, just about seven miles to the east of us across the Hudson River. Should be an interesting one. Pittsburgh went to the final last year. You have to consider them and, and UConn the favorites. You would think, right? They're sitting on the top of their respective divisions, but I think this year, more than any year in the uh, Big East, there could be a sleeper or two or three in that pack because they're so tightly been so tightly cont contested that you know one team catches fire earlier in the week and you never know what can happen nine lead changes already in this game and Trotman got loose in a nice dish for an easy bucket to tie it at 17. Pitt's really being patient with the basketball and finding the seams at the foul line and then that allows whoever catches the ball at the foul line to turn and look opposite wing or down low Here's Barrett behind a screen to shoot for three. Front rimmed it. Rebounded by Julius Page. He's running three on two. Javotkis missed the layup, and Morton got the rebound. And now the Pirates have a two-on-one opportunity. And there it is, Barrett from Shine. Well defended down the other end, at least in the rebounding side. And Shine running the floor with Barrett. Good delivery just then by Shine. The release was well done because he didn't really give Barrett any other choice but the catch and go with it. These two played earlier in the season at Pittsburgh. Game won by the Panthers, 70 to 65, and that was the closest anybody had been against the Panthers at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse all year, except Notre Dame. And you see Ty Shine bringing the ball down. He gives you the impression that he's going to go all the way with it, but look where he delivers, delivers it to Barrett. Just a quick catch and go. And when Shine and Barrett are playing well together and they play well defensively, it can be a little bit of an enthusiastic lift for the Seton Hall team because you know the guards are being pressured at the defensive end. Well, if you like guard matchups, you're going to like this. Nice backdoor pass that time. A traveling violation call. Marcus Toniel for Seton Hall. There's timeout on the court under eight minutes remaining in the first half. And the Pirates trying to spring an upset on Pittsburgh. Seton Hall off to a good start in hopes of upsetting Pittsburgh tonight. Let's take a look at the Hyundai game summary. Some excellent shooting from the field by Seton Hall and behind the arc, Pittsburgh has not found the range. No, they haven't. And if you're thinking Seton Hall defensively right now, you want to keep switching your defenses up and as much as you possibly can when you come down for your half court sets, you want to pack it in and keep forcing the ball to the perimeter. And what they've been doing at the defensive end has really helped them to get the ball down the floor, Seton Hall, and they should continue to look to go quickly but not force the, the action with a bad shot and a quick shot. And traveling violation that time. That's the fifth turnover by Pittsburgh. Chad Johnson walked with it. You're a big proponent of switching defenses, aren't well, you? Yeah, I love to do that. I think, uh, you know, when you do that, it keeps the other team guessing. And part of it is that what you want to do, and ba Ben Howland's squad has had to do this with Seton Hall early on, the guards, especially the point guard, you want to keep him guessing as much as possible. What kind of read is this? What kind of defense is it? You've taken some time off the clock, and your other team, his teammates, having problems figuring it out also if the point guard does. John Allen, corner jumper. He's got it. 
It's a three-pointer. Seton Hall starting to settle in a little bit at the offensive end of the floor. It's when they take the quick, long outside shots is when they run into problems. If they're patient, they're a much better team. Brandon Knight has five points thus far. Shine doing a good job on him defensively. Well, that's where you know with Shine and Barrett, they'll put the pressure on the point guard position. Trumpman knocks down a three. So the freshman from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, has got five. Tony L got hung up on a screen defensively that trip. Trumpman wide open on the right side. There's a whistle down low. It's going to be against Pittsburgh. You're watching the Big East on a Tuesday night from Continental Airlines Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Eighth-ranked Pittsburgh and Seton Hall. Mike Crispino along with Jim Spinarco. Happy you could join us. It's senior night for Ty Shine, Charles Manga, and Darius Lane of the Pirates. And they have a two-point lead. And once again, pretty patient against this defense by Pitt. They're known for their defense. Shine put an off-balance shot up, didn't catch anything. Frey got the rebound down low. And Damian Frey has done a nice job, a native of Jamaica. Didn't arrive in the States till age 14, and he's had four early points. He's made two very good moves, and here Shine kind of floats one up. And Frey just had pretty good position initially. He just worked harder than Troutman did that trip to get on the inside. And guess what? Something fell out of the sky for him and puts him to the line. And that's just a good example of getting in position. You just never know what will happen. Right, exactly. I mean, generally, if those basketball goes hard against the board, for example, or the rim, then they kick out on you. But there he got a break because it was an air ball coming down. Came down pretty softly for him also. They steal the point. Three-point lead, and now some half-court pressure. A little one-two-two. Two. Take a little time off the clock. Once again, get Pitt guessing and thinking about what kind of defense is this. And now they go back into a man-to-man. -man. Notre Dame has beaten Pittsburgh twice. They lost at Miami in two overtimes, and they lost to South Florida. Julius Page, nice dish to let. He drew the foul. And it's one of the areas in the basketball floor that Pitt has had some good success early on in this basketball game. Drive the baseline and keep looking for the middle of the floor. They've been doing that from the front, from the wings, and also from the baseline. He's a JC transfer from Pensacola Junior College. Weighs in at 265, 66. Charles Barkley-like in terms of his size. He's been an immediate impact for Ben Howland's squad, too. Nice to have consistency and depth coming off the bench. And he can throw some muscle around. Uh, just a little, huh? Zavatkis got the rebound on the offensive glass, and Pittsburgh has a chance to tie or take the lead. Zavatkis, no good. Rebound, shine. Here's John Allen. No good. It's kicked up in the air, and there's going to be a whistle down low. And it goes against Greg Morton. That's his first. Seton Hall now has six team fouls, as do the Panthers. 5.35 remaining here in the first. Marquette ninth ranked in the country, leading at East Carolina by eight tonight. Indiana getting pounded by Illinois at halftime, 36-24. And Miami at Providence tonight, 31-21. That's in the first half. Corner jump from Julius Page is no good. Frey got the rebound. It's out to Shine, the bounce pass to Allen, who lays it up and in. Uh, that was a terrific pass by Shine, but how about the gather and the catch by Allen? The ball just a touch low, which showing you how quick he is on the right side of the floor and really blasting down the floor to get out with a quick, fast break opportunity. Under five minutes to go in the half. Here's Lett on the low box, turning, left hand layup, no good. Rebound, Damian Frey. See, Seton Hall is looking to push, but the, the real important part of it is to make good decisions. If nothing's there, just don't come up firing until your guys get set at the offensive end. Seton Hall all year has been able to create turnovers, 17 by their opponents. And how about that? Darius Lane just stops and pops. Yeah, once again, he goes cold sometimes, but when he gets hot, you really have to defend him and find him in a hurry. 
once again, Shine doing a pretty good job defensively against Knight, just trying to slow him down a touch. Largest lead of the game, Seton Hall by seven. There have been nine lead changes. Led on the baseline, couldn't get it off. Brandon Knight left alone. No good. Rebound, Zavotchkis. Offensive rebounding has been a story for Pitt. They're just not converting, though. And finally, Frey came up with it, so the Pirates can expand their lead. Here's Lane, goes hard to the bucket, floats it up, and it will not count. It's gonna be an offensive foul on Darius Lane. And Brandon Knight was down underneath the iron to take the contact. Lane able to knock it down from outside the arc, and now the Pirates lead by seven. Back in a moment. Mike Crispino, Jim Spinarkle at Continental Airlines Arena, where Seton Hall leads Pittsburgh 28 to 21. Pitt 5 and 0 in the month of February, trying to go unbeaten in a month of February for the first time. Right now, Seton Hall is shooting the ball well, and they've held Pittsburgh below 30 percent. And generally, that works the other way with Pitt this season. They've been one of the leading defensive teams in the league and in the country, actually. And take a look at the numbers of the offensive boards. As I mentioned before, the first game, they had 21 offensive rebounds. Troutman lays it up and in by himself. Pretty good reaction once again to a switching defense. That time Pitt again going quickly, and once they have the numbers, they've been quick to attack. So you would think that Louis Orr may make an adjustment at layback, at least the half court, pick up a little bit there rather than the full court, because Pitt, I think, is about three for four in attacks against that. You talked about Pittsburgh's defense earlier, Jim. Six times this year they held teams to under 20 and a half. Brandon Knight driving, deals it off, they miss a layup. And Knight able to track it down. Good kick out there with the defensive rebound slap away. I think it was Morton who got a hand on it just to get it away from the offensive pin. Troutman has really provided a boost off the bench for Ben Howland. He's got seven. Whoa. And Knight got knocked down in the lane, fell over, and now he's trying to go after one of the Seton Hall players, Mauricio Bramwell. Well, I'm not so sure it was a, an intentional hit, but Knight did catch one cutting through the middle of the lane. And he went down in a hurry, I will tell you that much. And Knight lost it after taking one off the bridge of the nose. Yeah. We'll take a look at it. It's off the ball, so it's difficult. You just see him coming down off the shot. Hard to tell, obviously, from that angle. But my first impression of it was I didn't see a, an elbow flying. I thought guys were mixing it up in the middle of the floor there and looking for position. And I think it was more of an inadvertent. Double technical fouls have been assessed. You'll see to your right of your screen, you'll see Knight come down in a flurry and holding what appears to be the right side of his face more than anything. So Brandon Knight now has two personal fouls. Branwell will sit down, so Louis, Louis Orr decides to take him out. The freshman out of uh, Dunbar, originally from Brooklyn, New York. So Pittsburgh will inbound with 2.52 left in the first half. The officials were all over that too, Mike. Worth commenting on. They got right in the middle of it with a couple of players who were heated. They did the right thing and just step in and take control of the basketball game. I'm sure you'll see some quick whistles now if it gets tight inside. Nice running jumper that time by Chad Johnson. Ball is loose and it's going to be Seton Hall ball with 27 to shoot. Yeah, the men in the truck are working for us. Look kind of right in the middle of the floor. You'll see Knight come from the left side. And we'll see if anybody throws anything up high. Oh, certainly inadvertent. It looked that way anyway. Here's Barrett. Can't get it off. Now in some trouble. Loses it. Allen has it, and they've still got plenty of time to work with. 
John Allen driving, and there's going to be an offensive foul called on John Allen. That's his first. Yeah, see, Allen has to pull up here for the little jumper. The other part of it, though, too, is Troutman's moving a little bit to the left just then, and he's underneath the basket. So that's one of the rules I would like to see the college game change. You just can't stand underneath the basket and pick up charges like that. It gets pretty dangerous for the offensive player. So going without Brandon Knight and a turnover as Johnson got tangled up with John Allen. Allen being warned by one of the referees. There's Brandon Knight who took the shot to the eye. So some blood beginning to boil here tonight. Seton Hall trying to spring an upset on Ben Howland and Pitt. Well, that's why you'll see, I'm sure, as I just touched on, the officials will start jumping in a little quicker. Shine knocks down a three off a screen. That's the best thing that can happen for you when you're playing at home. If it gets the intensity level starts to get up, you basically knock down a couple of shots and take, try to take Pitt out of it a little bit. A lot of bumping going on underneath, though. Trotman has had an impact, certainly an impact with his play in the first half. Kicks it back out to Brown for an open three. And the lefty got it to go. Jerron Brown is in the scorebook with his first three points. Here's Shine in some trouble. To Morton for the little jump, no good. Rebounded by Johnson. A good delivery there by Shine. Morton, though, just a little quick with that shot and hurrying it. Brown off a screen, missed the shot. Morris might have got away with a little push. Yeah, and maybe a little shove down below, you're right. just anticipate the second half. These two teams are going to get to know one another a little more intimately. Another understatement. <laughs> it's your second of the game. <laughs> Might be a record for you. Oh, steal on a careless pass. Pittsburgh gets it back. And Page making it happen defensively. Now Morris thought about shooting it. Hands it down low and another traveling violation. That is the third of the game on Chad Johnson. And a 30-second timeout called by the Pirates. Coming up at halftime, our weekly awards. The Big East Player of the Week, the Rookie of the Week. Any ideas on who that might be? Well, keep the surprise. All right. I know you like a few of the players. The, the rookies, there's some good ones. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about on the bubble, and there are plenty of those to talk about. It seems like five teams are on the bubble, depending on how you look at it. Highlights and stats as well. Yeah, a couple of teams coming down the stretch in the Big East. You know, the part of the problem with the Big East was getting into the NCAA tournament was how competitive it was about three weeks ago where a lot of the teams were just knocking one another off. And so as you come down the stretch, those wins, you'd really like to have them. But obviously these teams have really been well bunched when you look at like three through seven or so in total in the Big East. When you really rank them, that's where these teams have really banged around one another. So you figure that uh, UConn, Pittsburgh are certainly in, and right. Syracuse. But from there, I mean, anything could happen, right? Yeah, Miami, Notre Dame are two teams that I think have earned the right to get into the NCAA tournament this year. Well, Miami's got the 21 wins, right. so you have to figure that's the case. Here's Barrett, hard drive to the basket. Oh, he drew the foul, it almost went in. Oh, Barrett so quick with the basketball going either right or left, and that time did a very good job of deciding to break it down the dribble on the left-hand side of the floor. And then at the very end of this play, you'll notice him throw his body towards the right. He throws it in. He gets the defender, Page, to bite on it. And Barrett will go to the line for the pair. Andre Barrett misses the first two. First one. Pretty good free throw shooter. 76%. Got the second one. Pittsburgh final seconds. Brandon Knight to Chartman. They got to get it off. He does. And it does not go in. And Seton Hall heads to the locker room with a four-point lead over Pittsburgh, ranked eighth in the country. They do it on the strength of six three-pointers in the first half. And at halftime, it's Seton Hall 32, Pittsburgh 28. We'll return to Continental Airlines Arena for our halftime activities after these words. You're watching the Big East on Tuesday night.
Airlines Arena between Seton Hall and Pittsburgh. Let's take a look now at the Big East Conference standings brought to you by Conagra Foods, the title sponsor of the Conagra Foods Big East Men's Basketball Championship March 6th through 9th at Madison Square Garden. And a look on the eastern side of things. Connecticut has run away. They'll get the first day by at the Big East Tournament. Well, anytime you can get a by going into a tournament, it's really good because not only will you get your mental edge corrected, but you'll also be physically ready to go through the tournament. BC needs a win at Syracuse to get even in the conference at 8-8. Eight and eight. Meanwhile, on the west side of things, Pittsburgh leading the way at 11-3. and three. Rutgers at 8-6 and six has made a lot of noise this year. They really have. Most of it's been made on their home court. On the road, they're 2-6, and six, so that has has been a problem for Rutgers this season. And their RPI is 52, so they've got to do some major damage as well in the Big East Tournament. Now, as far as the NCAA, several teams on the bubble still in the Big East Conference. They've had five schools go now for these last four years to get any further than that in terms of numbers. St. John's has got to get hot. Rutgers, maybe even Boston College. Yeah, I think those three teams right now can really earn their way into the tournament if they win coming down the stretch here. Georgetown is probably going to have to win the uh, Big East Championship to get a, a shot at going in there but I like the fact that they have this under their own destiny right now and if they win they can get in St. John's RPI is 35 right now and Boston College is 46 we'll be back with more at halftime statistics and highlights of Seton Hall's Pirates and the Panthers of Pittsburgh that's next welcome back to Continental Airlines Arena in East Rutherford New Jersey Seton Hall 32 Pitt Panthers 28 at halftime and perhaps an upset brewing here on senior night for the Seton Hall Pirates. Mike Crispino and Jim Spinarkle. You know, Pittsburgh got 37 shots off. Seton Hall only took 21, yet they lead the game. Well, they're forcing a lot of shots, Mike, out to the perimeter for Pittsburgh, so they're having problems knocking them back from long range. Albeit, though, you know, they're doing a good job in the offensive glass again against Seton Hall. Just couldn't get on track, and I think primarily because of the switching defenses of Seton Hall. Seton Hall has played some pretty good defense uh, tonight. They've held... Pittsburgh does a poor shooting percentage, and they have the lead right now by four. Look at the first half highlights. One of the things they've done pretty well, Seton Hall, is they've pushed the ball. They see Lane from Barrett just then to finish things off. Lane with eight points, nine for Barrett. Good decision there with the jump shot. Down the other end, though, Brandon Knight coming at you with the jump shot of his own. Really trying to get back and get the tempo back as he gets a layup here. He snuck out on a long shot that time by Barrett. And then you see at the tail end there, Knight going down, little collision in the middle of the floor. Might have been Morton that he bumped into or got hit and knocked to the floor. So we would anticipate a little bit of a carryover of the intensity into the second half. First half shooting by Pittsburgh, 32%, only three of 16 from behind the arc. But 11 turnovers by Seton Hall kind of hurt their offense. Points off the turnovers. Seton Hall converted 12 off the seven pit turnovers. And as you mentioned, the offensive rebounding numbers uh, heavily in favor of Pitt. Yeah, sooner or later, if you continue to let a team hit the offensive glass, it doesn't really matter what their shooting percentage is up top. If you keep giving them second and third opportunities, you're going to be in for a long evening. So Seton Hall comes out on senior night, leading by four at halftime. We'll be back. Opening tip of the second half coming up in just a moment. This is the Big East. Seton Hall 32, Pittsburgh 28 to begin the second half. Brandon Knight took a shot in the eye late in the first half, but seems to be okay as he's at the foul line shooting. Knight was uh, held in the first half to five points, made a couple of early buckets, and then was quiet really the rest of the way. Well, we would anticipate as you take a look at the leading scorers there with Troutman and Barrett, I would anticipate that Knight would be more involved offensively in trying to make things happen and really keep the pressure on Seton Hall with the defensive end. This Pitt team, as I mentioned, 14 and one at home, nine and three on the road, 11 and three in the conference. They have been ranked in the top 25 for six straight weeks. First time in a long time they've been ranked. They, of course, have 23 wins. As I mentioned, 25 victories is the school record. Billy Knight's team back in 73-74, and then Charles Smith, 86-87. There's Knight, two for seven, only one three-pointer and a couple of assists. He's averaging seven assists a game. A lot of that has been some inside misses by Pittsburgh, which had some golden opportunities. Yeah, they sure did, and, and converting them down low for Pitt is, was the question mark for the first half. You'll see if their efficiency increases. 
You know, as we touched on with all those offensive rebounds that they had, uh, granted they're missing a lot of shots, shooting 12 to 37, but getting those 13 offensive boards, surprising that they didn't get a shot to knock them down as you take a look at Andre Barrett tonight nine points doing a good job I mean those numbers are pretty steady across the board right there but also I think doing a good job of controlling the tempo and between Shine and Barrett they're doing a pretty good job also of slowing Knight down with the basketball Barrett averaging 16 and a half a game had a good start to this one a little high screen outside looking for a pick and roll Knight going down the Lane now kicks it back out. Here's Zavatkis. High arcing rainbow. No good. Lane has the board. And once again, the perimeter forcing the ball outside. Barrett banged it off the boards and missed everything. Pittsburgh back the other way. They're down by four to start the second half. And that's those quick shots when Seton Hall that time with Barrett taking one off the glass, missing the iron. Brown deals it down low, but in some traffic, Julius Page. And a three-second violation called on Torrey Morris. Yeah, I think Morris thought that Page was going to shoot the basketball. Ben Howland's team, first minute here or so, still struggling to try to get on track. And it took him a while, the first three or four minutes of this basketball game, to get on track at the offensive end to start. Darius Lane's got two fouls. He started to turn it around on offense in the first half, then picked up that second foul. Down low, Manga. Turn around hook. No good. Manga went after it, couldn't get it. And that's what they tried to do in the first half. If you recall, they went down low to Manga, trying to get it to him on the offensive blocks, but they turned it over three or four times. Lane steals it down low, and here comes Andre Barrett. It's a three-on-three -three break. There is Lane from behind the arc. No good. Tipped up. Manga got the board, lost it. Kept it alive. Lane driving now to Barrett to shoot for three. And that's good. A good work there overall by Seton Hall, Manga in particular. But how about the extra dribble by Barrett? Bring the ball right to the middle, to the gut of the defense, and then that allows your shooter to get ready to go. Lane bringing the ball right to the middle. Seven points, Seton Hall lead. Pirates held Pittsburgh to just 32% shooting in the first half. How about that move from Julius Page? A little step back, too. And a wonderful ball fake by Page just then, too. Show that ball, get the defender moving. The sophomore from Buffalo, New York. That time, Darius Lane beat him into the lane and drew a foul. Second on Julius Page. Uh, Page cutting through. Coming through the lane right now. Watch the ball fake. A little fake gets Lane to leave his feet. And then it's all about just knocking it back like you did in the backyard. That is one of the most helpless feelings a defender yeah. could ever have. Especially when you're halfway down because there's not a whole lot you can do. Now gravity does take over. Now Page goes by Lane again, lays it up and in. So Julius Page leading a mini comeback by the Panthers and they're down by three. On their last two road games against Syracuse and West Virginia, they had chopped away a double digit leads that they were down on in those games. So they're used to coming back as Seton Hall turns it over again. And Knight gets called for a turnover himself. Seton Hall had 11 turnovers in the first half. They only averaged 14 and a half a game. So a little more sloppy than normal for the Pirates. And that one pretty clear with Knight hanging on to the ball, cupping it, bringing his hand underneath the basketball. John Allen looking for an opening. And Allen's an air ball. Whoa. Barrett got the rebound. His little putback jumper goes down. It appeared to go off the head of Menga just then, that <laughs> offensive rebound. I won't say it. But uh, I don't know. That's using your head. Yeah, you got it. Pretty sure it hit there. And you talk about friendly bounces for Seton Hall. Up by five. Down on the baseline. Let had it intercepted momentarily by Andre Barrett. Barrett's got 14 now. Yeah, make the call. Do you get an offensive rebound for that, Mike? <laughs> Does he have a soccer background? Well, he gets an assist at he least, gets, right? At least. He gets an assist. That's right. He's one way to fill up the stat sheet. Any way you can. Seton Hall with 12 wins on the season as Page's long-range three is off target. 
The hole looking for win number 13. In a disappointing season, John Allen, no good. Rebound yeah, by the Pirates. Morton from a long way out front. Lane tried to steal it, now he got it back. A frenetic gonna pace the... right now, and they're going to reset the clock. Yeah, the saying when the pit player had the basketball and saving it out of bounds that it was a possession. Louis Orr, the coach of Seton Hall, just got inducted into the Syracuse Hall of Fame. Most recently in New York. Here in his first season at Seton Hall. A little raggedness set at the offensive end for Seton Hall. Let's see if they can pull it back out and reload. Morton for the jump. No good. Manga goes up high, kept it alive. John Allen, the putback, count the bucket. Yeah, you know, we joked a little bit a moment ago about Manga hitting, getting that ball, hitting him off the head, but he's had three offensive sets here where he's been a factor, even though he doesn't really get credit on the stat sheet. See, right there on the way down, he gets his hand on the basketball, and Allen gets another friendly bounce for Seton Hall and goes to the line to convert. But it's really been Manga who's doing the work on the offensive side of the floor, at least the offensive glass. Now, should he be credited for an assist there? He took it off the backboard, ended up in Allen's hands in a three-point play. Senior night. All right, give it to him. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. Seton Hall by eight over Pittsburgh. Mike Crispino and Jim Spinarkle at Continental Airlines Arena where Seton Hall has their largest lead, 40 to 32. Top 25 around the country. Marquette in some trouble at East Carolina down by three, 49-46. Illinois and Indiana, the Hoosiers have closed the gap a little bit there. Miami rolling right now on Providence, 49 to 30. And that Miami team had a little bit of a slump lately but they could be very dangerous come tournament time question mark might be depth for them but first six player is very very good or so starters in particular and they all handle the ball well right. so under pressure they should be able to deal with you know tournament time and they shoot the ball well down low able to get it to go that time jerome brown has seven points hit back within six once again, looking for Manga on the blocks. They get it to him. Power move, Manga missed the layup, though. And the Panthers come up with a loose ball. Well, it really worked well, too. Everything but the finish just then. He caught it, drop step, turned at a wide open shot, just banged it off the board. And Jerron Brown has called for traveling. There have been a lot of those tonight against the Panthers. That's turnover number 11. They averaged 14 a game as well, so both clubs having trouble hanging on to it. Here's Barrett trying to go through traffic, and he's tied up. Small enough to squeeze through a lot of spots, but not that one. Here's Allen driving. Deals it down low to Manga. Can't get it to go, but he'll get two free throws. Allen pretty active, though, at the offensive end. Puts the ball on the floor, creates some opportunities for his teammates. Pretty good poise here, though, by Seton Hall. You see that little fake jump shot right there. And what happens defensively is you think the shooter is going up to take a shot you start to position yourself to go for a rebound next thing you know the ball's been slipped by it to a big guy like manga and you're recovering a little bit late you generally end up at the free throw line ontario let his whistle for his third foul and manga has his first point of the night charles manga six foot ten inch Senior from the Cameroon. Too long with it, and the rebound, Troutman. Brandon Knight decides to fire it up from behind the arc, and a long-range shot doesn't go. And Knight trying to catch Seton all napping a little bit at the defensive end with that quick pull-up. Seton all doing all they could to get that ball out of bounds so they would avoid another offensive rebound, which is kind of tapered off a little bit as Morton exits. Seton all doing a better job in the second half here for Louis Ora keeping the ball and off that offensive glass for Pitt for second opportunities. And Pittsburgh, 3 of 19 from behind the arc now. 
Ben Holland, of course, in Northern Arizona. His team's led the country in three-point shooting back-to-back -back years before he got the Pittsburgh. Troutman got rocked, made the basket. He'll get a free throw. Well, take it to the basket strongly, and good things will happen for you. And Troutman's showing that he's got a little bounce off the uh, floor there. And not only with a bounce off the floor, but some strength also. Once again, Brown gets it down low, a little slip cut. He goes strongly to the basket, gets popped. Well, watch his body stay fairly strong in the air, even after the hit, and then he goes down after he takes the shot. Siobhan Troutman, the freshman, six foot seven inch, has nine points, four or four from the field, and now there's a violation. Going to be on Seton Hall. A lane violation. It may have been on Barrett from behind. I think he said 32, 32 which would be John Allen. Allen possibly, yeah. So Trotman, red-shirted last year. Mr. Pennsylvania basketball in 2000. Can't get it to go. Great hustle down on the baseline that time by Jerron Brown, but he can't come up with the ball. And Ben Howland hops up off his bench, applauding that effort by Brown just then going after the basketball and the missed free throw. Seton Hall holding to a five-point lead. Here's Lane. Jump shot, no good. Tipped out that time by Seton Hall. John Allen from behind the arc. He's got it for three. Talk about taking advantage of opportunities. Those long shots from long range will result in longer rebounds. So Pitt kind of ran out and turned and ran into the basket looking for the rebound, but you have to remember it's going to kick out pretty sharply on you. Down low, it's loose, and a turnover by Pittsburgh. Seton Hall by 8, 44, 36. A team that's shooting under 40% this season. The Pirates at 47% right now. Yeah, they have Pitt a little confused, too. They're switching defenses. Pitts just can't really get a rhythm at the offensive end. Barrett's three-pointer, front-rimmed, rebounded by the Panthers. Brandon Knight with it. Zavatkis did not shoot it, and there's some activity down in the lane that time, and Branwell knocked down Siobhan Troutman. Mauricio Brandman, Branwell, I should say, has three now. He really hasn't been out there that long but he's been in the middle of things. Had the technical foul called on him in the first half with Knight. And Johnson was standing on the sideline. He's had a rough night. Chad Johnson's had about three traveling violations. Stepped out of bounds right there. One of those nights, huh? I guess. <laughs> well, of course, you never had any of those. No, you wouldn't no, know. Never, never had any of those. You knew where you were on the court at every moment. Seton Hall pretty patient, though. They're a better team when they're patient at the offensive end. It'll hold on the left side, possibly now with Troutman, maybe. And Siobhan Troutman is now have three fouls. He has been a good offensive player tonight for Ben Howland. Frey again, pretty active down on the blocks. Moving without the basketball, that's why Troutman had to reach in. And a foul this time on number 23, so the whistles are Blowing. That time, Damian Frey whistle. Well, the officials want to keep this game fairly under control, especially after the first half where it got a little anxious. A couple extra bumps and grinds and, and pokes in the first half, so it makes sense to really be aware of what's going on here. Little edge to this one physically. Final couple of regular season games. Jump hook is short, rebounded by Frey, and he's done a good job tonight for Louis Orr. He's been around the ball a lot. Here's Barrett. Nearly knocked off his feet. Seton Hall by eight. They can afford to take their time right now. Kicks out to Shine. It's a three-guard alignment right now for Louis Orr. Shine lost it. Taken away by the Panthers. Julius Page ahead of the field. Missed the shot. Zavakis hit no good. And there's going to be a goaltending call on Seton Hall. Looks like somebody may have pulled on the net. 
Here's the two attempts. Page gets hit a little bit there without the call. The follow-up tip. Yeah, there's the grabbing of the rim. So they credit the bucket to Zavotchkis. Yeah, he's the one with the tip. So he gets the basket. Four for him. And the points off turnovers have been a big factor tonight for the Pirates. They've had 18. Panthers have 10, including those two. Morton cutting across the lane. Ball taken away. Hit a little more active defensively the last two trips. Knight down low, and it's taken by Seton Hall. Knocked down. Brandon Knight wide open for three. Got it. Louis Orr wants to talk things over. Good decision by Louis Orr right now. Pitt starting to take a little bit more control of this game, and they're doing it from the defensive end. And Louis Orr recognized it quickly, and let's make a change, he's saying. 11-28 remaining. Seton Hall by three over Pittsburgh. They're ranked eighth in the country and in some trouble. Seton Hall by three, 44-41. 11-28 left in the game. Let's take a look at Shooting the Rock, brought to you by Rolling Rock. Grab a rock. Let you take a look at the numbers. I mean, uh, no one's going to grab the stat sheet tonight for Pitt from long range, that's for sure. Four of 20, 20% 20 even up in uh, the hall. Knocking them back at 44%. And really, that's been the difference in terms of their confidence. We'll see what they can do at the offensive end of the floor right now because Pitt's defense has been turned up a bit. Key for Seton Hall seems to be patience when they make an extra pass or two. They get a better shot, and they're shooting the ball well tonight. When they don't do that, that's a problem. Here's Frey, baseline, trying to get up and make a shot, and he draws a foul. Frey's showing some different moves each time he catches the basketball down low. We've seen him drop step into the middle of the floor. We've seen him follow up, but here he goes to the baseline side. Watch his right leg start to get around. As soon as that right leg gets around, generally your shoulder will get around. If you can somehow use that shoulder to your advantage by getting by the defender, you're going to end up at the line minimum. The foul called on Zavatskis. That's his second. Panthers have five team fouls. Second from Frey gets the roll. Damian Frey with one of two. Six points on the night for him. Seton Hall by four. 11.07 remaining. Mike Crispino, Jim Spinarco, where Seton Hall leads 45-41, Continental Airlines Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Julius Page, outstanding backcourt sophomore, row, has six points. And the ability to put the ball on the floor shows a little ball fake that trip, gets Lane to bite on it. Yeah, but really, it starts off with his ball fakes. I mean, he really gets you leaning. You're playing defense against him one-on-one -on -one and to make a lot of things happen because of his quickness with the basketball. Some full court pressure. You can see he's made three of eight, but he has not connected from behind the arc. And there's some contact underneath the basket. It's going to be against Seton Hall. Their fourth team foul. Damian Frey has got two now. And Charles Mangle will replace him. And once again, the officials keeping an eye on the screens that are being set inside. That's where Knight got hit in the first half, cutting through the lane. So the officials want to make really sure that nobody's holding, nobody's pushing down low, that the screens are set and they're stationary. Brown's three-pointer off target, run down by Marcus Toniel, and here's Ty Shine. Uh, two guards now, Barrett and Shine, like to go up and down. Greg Morton, down low to Manga. Missed the shot, but he'll get a couple of free throws. Charles Manga was point blank. Try to finesse it home. That's that good high-low action here. Barrett cuts across, and Morton just goes straight over the top. Manga has a couple of people running at him, but another one that just misses. That's the second one tonight that he's had an opportunity to go right up and maybe even dunk the basketball. It is the fourth foul on Ontario Letts. Manga cannot connect. He's now one of three from the line. So Lett has got to sit down. He's replaced by Siobhan Troutman. Yeah. 
Manga, one of three seniors tonight, playing for Seton Hall. Misses both. So an opportunity wasted right there for the Pirates. Well, especially a wasted trip, not only at the line, but that pinpoint shot that they had. Really should have just converted it and been looking to convert a three-point play that trip rather than missing two free throws. 15 to shoot. Shine on Brandon Knight. Knight goes down the lane, dishes it off, and it's taken away. Here comes three Barrett. On, yep, three on two numbers here. Shine doesn't shoot it. That will start all over. Might have sprained an ankle there. He's in some pain. Barrett for three. Yeah, you're right. Ty Shine is hobbled to the point where he's got to leave for a moment. That was odd because he really didn't try to make a sharp move. The, the ankle just rolled on him. A lot of times as a player, you do that so many times throughout the course of the season, but that was just an odd roll for Ty Shine just then. Andre Barrett now has 17 points. His season high came earlier this year against Iona when he had 26. But Barrett has been outstanding from behind the arc tonight. You're watching Pittsburgh and Seton Hall at Continental Airlines Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Mike Crispino, Jim Spinarkle. And the Hall by seven with under 10 minutes remaining. Troutman in traffic has to kick back to Johnson. His shot short, rebounded by Marcus Tonio. Pirates continue to do a better job this half on the rebounding defensively. And Allen got the roll. John Allen has heated up in the second half. He's got eight in the half. 13 on the game, and that's the biggest lead of the night for the Pirates, 50 to 41. When they make the good decisions on the break, that's when they're a much better ball club, the Pirates. Chad Johnson nearly walked again. Brandon Knight, off balance three, it goes. Oh, was that ever tough though, Mike? The other part of that shot was squaring, coming around the, the curl cut and catching it away, going away from the basket, but strong enough to get the shot to go down. A real momentum breaker for the moment. And a foul called on Chad Johnson as Marcus Tonio had the rebound in hand. And Seton Hall will go to the line now. That brings the Panthers to the bonus, to the limit. Now Seton Hall, a 69% free throw shooting team, has got to take advantage if they hope to spring an upset. Pretty good edge for them right now with the team fouls. Pittsburgh at seven. Seton Hall with only four right now, so they can uptick their defense a little bit, and every mistake that Pitt makes at the defensive end is going to cost them at the line. Marcus Toniel has shot him at 61% this year. That's way off target. First opportunity and an upset already in the top ten. East Carolina holds Marquette to 46 points. And Ontario Lett has just fouled out. An offensive foul on the baseline. And Manga just held his ground defensively. Lett goes off with a smile. Of, you know, I wasn't sure. But watch Manga stay squared. Not much of a hit with those two big guys, but he threw the body right into the chest of Manga. So if you're going to blow the whistle, that has to be an offensive foul. So Lett will leave. He had only three points. Average is eight and a half. Pittsburgh picks up the intensity on defense, extends it. Barrett has it taken away by Brandon Knight. Well, it's Knight ever quick defensively. Under eight minutes remaining. And a six-point Seton Hall lead. Brandon Knight isolated right now with Barrett. They want to try to get something going towards the basket if they can. Knight got hit on the way in. That's a smart move by Knight also. Did you notice he did get hit? So I'm not saying there shouldn't have been a foul call, but he reacted like there was worse, a worse call there, and it was a good bump, but he took it. We'll be back in a moment. The Pirates by six with 741 left. You're watching the Big East. In their seventh try against a ranked team this year, Seton Hall trying for their first win over a ranked team. Now let's take a look at the BMW ultimate drive of the game. Well, John Allen will keep basketball and they're off to the races. Nice look by Ty Shine. Allen finishing it off down the end. And he got out very quickly that trip to make things happen. 
Allen five of nine for 13 points. And Seton Hall had Duke, Kansas, Michigan State, Boston College, Syracuse, and Illinois and could not beat any of them. An opportunity again tonight against the eighth-ranked Pittsburgh Panthers. Here's Knight, long-range three, no good. Rebounded by Marcus Toniello, who's done a good job on the boards. Seton Hall trying to keep Pitt out on the perimeter, make them hit shots from long range to get back into this basketball game, and Seton Hall continues to do a pretty good job defensively off the uh, glass. Vodkas got knocked down. Here's Lane in the lane, taken away. Loose ball, and the Panthers have it. Brown kick out in the corner to Julius Page. No good. Brown got the rebound, and he got hit on the way in. John Allen will be whistled. It's the second on John Allen, sixth on the team. Page has not made one from behind the arc. Now, I know he's got a shooter's mentality. He's going to keep shooting it. The yeah. question is, will he lose confidence at some point? Well, if you're open, you have to shoot it, I think. Oh, they just can't get the ball to go down for them. That's a good look right there. Zavatkis adds to the misery for Pittsburgh outside the arc. Barrett, no good. Battle on the boards, and there's going to be a foul. John Allen got to the offensive glass that time. And yeah, Barrett that time once again down his end of the floor with a good shot for Seton Hall, just barely missing it. But look at how softly that shot comes down from long range. And once again, John Allen always around the basketball. Siobhan Troutman called for his fourth. As you can see, Pittsburgh 5 of 25 from behind the arc. You know, that's for a team that knocks them back at a 33% clip. So, obviously, they've been struggling from long range. And Allen converts for the Pirates. And they switch up their defense a little bit. Switch it up. Make Pitt rethink. Allen has given Seton Hall an eight-point lead. Six and a half remaining. And Pitt needs to get something going towards the basket. Seton Hall has six team fouls on them right now. So get something going and get something going strong. There you go. That makes something happen. Lane with the body bump. And Page that trip. He'll go to the line right now where he knocks him back at about 83%. And you got to play aggressive basketball, especially when you're down. You're nearing that six-minute mark. You're down 52-44. You have to be patient, patient with the basketball, and make sure you get good opportunities, but I think you really have to get something going towards the basket. So Julius Lane got the roll on the one and one, and now he's got seven points. So Ben Howland, 23 victories. Pittsburgh having their best year in 25 years. A pretty good shooter's touch on that last one for Page also. Pitt's going to have to earn this one, it looks like, though, in the last six minutes of this basketball game. Page makes both to answer Allen's free throws. Let's see if they can turn their defense up a notch. Six minutes remaining, and Seton Hall leading 52 to 46. And they're content in taking some time off the clock right now. And one thing is when you do this, you sometimes get out of your offensive sets because you get too patient. You almost lull yourself into mistakes. Lane shoots it from way downtown. Didn't get the roll. So they settled for a three-pointer. And now Pittsburgh can inch closer. And Big Page thinks he can go by Lane. Zavatkis from the corner for three. Well, Page with the assist right there, too. Breaking down Lane off the dribble, forcing... Defenders to rotate a little bit, and that frees you up with the corners. Seton Hall trying to snap a four-game losing streak. Pittsburgh riding a five-game winning streak. Lane, high arcing shot, didn't go. Ball loose. Here's Julius Page. They've got numbers. Page fakes, goes up, and a blocking call against Seton Hall. That's a good call, too. Page very strongly coming down and attacking. The last three trips on the offensive end, Page has really made a difference. 
You're going to see Page come right at you right now. And watch the step in by Allen. Clearly moving. He does not have good position. And Page, because he's aggressive with the basketball, makes something good happen for Pitt. And then you look up, and all of a sudden, they're only down three. So they did a real good job in this last 90 seconds or so to fight their way back into this. So Pittsburgh within three with five minutes remaining. Boston College shocked everyone last season as they completed a remarkable turnaround from the worst to first in the conference before going on to win the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden. Don't miss the chance to be part of this year's exciting Big East Championship at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Wednesday, March 6th through the 9th, obtain tickets to the Conagra Foods 2002 Big East Men's Championship. Call the Garden Ticket Office, 212-465-MSG1 or contact Ticketmaster. One of the things... Let's take a look at the Panthers number there, huh? Number eight ranking, the highest in 14 years. And unbeaten in February. First time that has happened for the Panthers. So Seton Hall in another close game, and now Julius Page cuts the lead to two. The Hall coming off a couple of close losses recently. Syracuse here by two. Notre Dame won here by two. They did beat St. John's by two. They've been in a lot of close ones. And now Julius Page has Pittsburgh on a 7-0 run, and they're back within one. Pitt has only gone to the line eight times. They've knocked back five of them, but that's a number they'd like to creep up there as we go down the stretch, try to get to the basket a little bit and get to the line. Allen goes to the basket, floats it no good. Ball is loose, and Lane ran it down. Uh, One-point basketball games at college level. You can imagine guys are going to be going after the ball. Barrett ducks up and under, and he missed it. And as a foul call down low, it's going to be on Andre Barrett. Well, it might be Manga out front, too, coming down. Here comes the drive by Barrett. He slips under. Watch Manga coming to the right. Yeah, it's Manga. Manga pushes Brown across the, the back of the head a little bit. And Charles Manga, the senior, has fouled out in his final home game. He scored one point, had a couple of rebounds. Was instrumental, though, in the Pirates opening up their nine-point lead. Charles Manga finishing off his Seton Hall career, and he'll be replaced by Damian Frey, I should say, his Seton Hall career at home. You know, Lewis Orr now will have to go with a smaller lineup without Manga available from this point on. Which means that these guys for Seton Hall will have to block out, keep Pitt off the boards. Jerron Brown's got seven points, but he does not have eight. Pirates clinging to that one-point lead. Allen. Had a man open down low for just a moment. Seton Hall infrequently will go to the basket. Allen's fairly active with the basketball. Well defended here by Pitt, though. Double team coming, and there's a steal. Kept alive by Morton. A great save by Morton with seven on the shot clock. Lane, no good. Rebound by Frey. Puts it up. He got it. That's a big-time recovery, though, by Morton to keep that possession alive for Seton Hall. They were very, very close to turning the basketball over with four guys below the free-throw line, so they would have been in trouble at the other end with Pitt on the charge. Seton Hall by three, under four minutes remaining. Try to get something going towards the basket if you can, if you pit. And Julius Page has been isolating on Darius Lane and getting it going offensively. Zavachkis can't get by his man. Now six to shoot. Here's Page on near half court. Sets up and shoots it. No good. Rebounded by Pittsburgh. Zavachkis. And he's got it to go. He'll get a free throw. And he can tie it. It is funny how this game works out sometimes. Seton Hall defends pretty well for about 30 seconds. Page will take that long shot. And then all of a sudden, it's up for grabs. And Look at the baseline work by Zavatkis along the baseline. Gives himself a little pump and, and surely gives the team Pittsburgh a little pump going down the stretch here with 3.11 left. The junior from Lithuania completes a three-point play. 
And now he has eight in the second half and in the double figures. We're all tied at 54. 311 remaining. Back to Continental Airlines Arena after this. Mike Crispino, Jim Spinarco at Continental Airlines Arena. We're tied at 54. Look at our best play of the game brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Zavak is taking it along the baseline. Huge bucket here for Pitt. Making things happen on the baseline is so important in the game of basketball, but tying the score up right now and here in the three minute mark, we are ready to go tied up and see who wants this basketball game more. Pittsburgh on a 13-4 run after Seton Hall had opened up the largest lead of the game at nine points. That was at 546 of so the last Three minutes or so have been owned by the Panthers. And now they're upping the intensity on defense. Lane can't get anything done. Shot clock down to five right now. Going to have to get something off. Allen off a screen blocked by Brandon Knight. And as the ball came down. That's a shot clock violation. It never touched the iron. Right. Well defended there by Pitt. Louis Orr's squad just could not get a good look at it. Every opportunity they tried to break down Pitt off the dribble a couple of times. Pitt reacted defensively. Seton Hall now has to do it this side. Pittsburgh has not led since very early in this game. Julius Page goes right to the bucket and lays it up. You know, he's basically had his way from the 15, 18 foot range against Lane. Breaking him down off the dribble. 12 points for Page. 10 of those in the second half. Here's Barrett, goes hard to the basket, no good. Tough decision there by Barrett. Knight right on his hip. Let's see if Pitt sits on it for a second or two here. They want to isolate Page again against Lane. That's worked for them about four or five times in the second half. Two-point lead. Brandon Knight looking for a play call. He comes from the bench. Pittsburgh's been very good when holding teams under 60. 15 and 1 when they do that. And right now they've got Seton Hall at 54. Ben Howlin jumping off the bench, looking for a timeout right there. Didn't like what he saw. 13 seconds left in the shot clock, so it makes a lot of sense. Your team is looking ragged at the offensive end for a set. Call a timeout and reload. This game is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. Glad you can join us. Mike Crispino, Jim Spinarkel, and the senior night for Seton Hall Pirates fans and Charles Manga, who has fouled out Darius Lane. Right now has eight points, but he's been shut out in the second half. Ty Shine has three. And these seniors playing their final home game on this court. Big East Tournament, of course, coming up next week. We'll have an opportunity to continue. Seton Hall has to visit Connecticut on the final weekend of the season. Each team with one full timeout and one thirty second timeout apiece, but Pitt has to go quickly now with 10 seconds left. Good matchup here, one on one. Knight spinning, goes to the lane, lays it up and in. A beautiful shot from Brandon Knight. Seton Hall in a little bit of trouble now. They have to do the same type of thing. Find a way to get to the basket. Don't settle for a long shot when you're down four. There it is from Darius Lane, no good. Barrett out leaps wow. Knight and they come up with it. So Seton Hall sometimes falls into that trap of shooting long shots and you really want to go towards the basket for two reasons. Number one, it's a shorter shot. Number two, you get advantages. And by the way, you stop the clock also. What a move by Brandon Knight. Yeah, this is called taking over a basketball game in a big situation. A beautiful floater. And once again, the smaller lineup for Seton Hall. Without Manga in there, he comes away. Knight looks like he took a little shot to the belly there. Well, he's gotten an elbow in the eye, and now that. But he's got his team ahead by four. East Carolina has pulled an upset up already tonight, beating Marquette. Indiana closed in, but Illinois held him off 70 to 62. And Miami rolling on Providence 67 to 48. Ohio State by just two over Michigan State right now, and they're just underway at Oklahoma. A 7-2 lead just underway at Florida, where the Gators have a two-point lead over Tennessee. Pittsburgh on a 17-4 run. Seton Hall's made one of their last 12 shots. 
and time is running out. 109 remaining. Here's Lane in the lane. Got it to go. Now an eternity left in this game right here. Seton Hall has to play a good sound defense right here. A little jump switch to keep the activity going. Pitt's going to try to take some time off the clock. Confident that they can knock back one right here. Brandon Knight wants to take Barrett. Moves in, laid it up, he missed it. Bray has it. The Hall with a chance. No timeouts. Here's Allen going down the lane to Bray. Got it to go, and he got fouled. Well, finally, Seton Hall decides to take the ball towards the basket. Only good things can really happen for you there. And here's a great example of some good things happening because the strength along the baseline. Allen finds Frey in the middle, and Frey goes strongly to the hoop. Great reaction by Frey as he comes down. And it's Seton Hall, just under 40 seconds left. Down a bucket, go to the basket, make some things happen, and they end up going to the line here. Terrific reaction. Finish there by Frey, especially after getting bumped pretty good going to the line. And the foul on Siobhan Troutman is his fifth, so he is gone. He'll join Ontario Lett on the bench. So certainly a concern for Ben Howland should this go to overtime. And Frey, what a night for him. Ten points, seven rebounds. He's made all four of his field goal attempts. A great lift for Seton Hall. Yeah, you got to knock one back at the line. With Charles Manga fouled out, Frey has seen significant time, and he's made the most of it. He averages three points a game. He goes to the line for a fifth opportunity from the line. There's that number at the bottom, though, season 61% from the line. Now, that's the one he's got to ignore in his Absolutely. head. Absolutely. Got it. Oh, that confidence coming to the line. Oh, that's a huge, huge play for Seton Hall down the stretch. Let's see if Pitt can answer. You know Knight's going to be involved. Might want to get Page involved also off the dribble. They go to a 1-4 set here. Knight can't lose Barrett. Puts it up. No, he didn't put it up. Johnson's going to shoot for three. In and out. Rebound Seton Hall. Morton gets fouled. 15 seconds left. Oh, did Johnson ever have a look at that basket? I can't believe that that ball, and I don't think he can believe that that ball came out. It appeared as if, you know, cliche, that it was about halfway down. This was at least a quarter of the way down, I thought. Look at him spray to the top. A beautiful find just then by Knight. You get a free look at it, little pressure. Wow, how does that not stay in? Everything is fine, but the finish. Been a tough night for Chad Johnson. One of six, only two points. And the senior had an opportunity right there to give his team a two-point lead. So Seton Hall will have a couple of free throws. It made only eight of 15 on the night. So Seton Hall trying to beat their first ranked team of the year. They've gone 0 and 6. Up by one. They both got full timeouts remaining. The next foul by Pittsburgh. And yeah, now Morton will go to the line. And both teams with 10 fouls up on the board. Morton will be. The shooter of 65% really didn't matter to Frey that he was a 61% shooter. Let's see what happens with Morton here. And Louis Orr with a little pacing going on. Morton's got the first. And these guys are knocking him back. Tight situations. I mean, they don't seem to be frazzled at all. This is a crucial one. Got that one. Greg Morton with two. Free throws, final seconds. Here's Knight. Well defended so far. Let's see if they can get a shot off. Zavaskis gets it off, and he got it! 3.4 remaining. We're tied at 61. And everybody was so concerned with Knight with the basketball. Zavaskis just hanging around, waiting for an opportunity. Seton Hall bit to go double off the screen. Take a look up high. It's going to come down 
plenty of time to get a shot off. And you'll see the double screen up here. Here comes the double screen. Zavakis swirls off. And where's his defender? Morton goes for the ball just for a second. And it knocks a big, big time shot down to knock this one up at 61 apiece. And almost no reaction from Donatus Zavatkis. He knows there's still 3.4 remaining. He's had a tough night. 5 of 15 shooting for him. This is a Pittsburgh team that shoots 47% from the field, but tonight only 38%. Pittsburgh has a timeout left. Seton Hall does not. And it's going to come down to one more opportunity. This could be the one. It could be one of those games where the last team with the ball wins. It could very well be that way. You Seton Hall wants to make sure, though, that they're very careful with this inbound. But you may see a little half-and-half -half type pressure right here from Pittsburgh coming back to kind of slow it down so they don't get it past half court in a hurry. Pittsburgh had made only 6 of 28 from behind the arc before that one from Zavetkis with 3.4 remaining. Yeah, Pitt's showing right now that they're going to pick up a little bit to derail Seton Hall and slow them down so they don't come flying down the floor in a hurry. Now Seton Hall has to be very careful with the inbounds pass down this end of the floor also. Charles Manga, the senior, fouled out. We'll have to watch the rest of this one. Here's Barrett on the inbound. Barrett goes by Knight, puts it up, and he got fouled, but yep. the buzzer had gone off just before he got it off. Yeah, they'll put a little more time on the clock. Uh, five minutes, and we'll go to overtime. As Barrett got in position to shoot it, but didn't quite get it off. Yeah, that's why Pitt put the full court defense on. You see Knight back backtracking a little bit there that's just it's force Barrett to go a little bit from east to west right there uh, the horn sounds before any contact so let them play out don't let the officials make the judgment at the end of the last couple of seconds of a basketball game and so Seton Hall goes to overtime for the second time this year they were able to beat St. John's here 63 61 earlier this season you're watching 8th-ranked Pittsburgh and Seton Hall. This is Big East Basketball. I'm Mike Crispino and Jim Spinarkel from Continental Airlines Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Pittsburgh at 23-4. and four. One of their losses came in double overtime. That was the only other overtime game they have played this year. That was at Miami, and the Canes won it 76-69. Ben Howland has to feel fortunate for the way his team has shot the ball to be getting into overtime. A couple of guys fouling out, though, won't help him here in the uh, overtime. And Seton Hall also with Manga not available. So pretty much smaller lineups out there, even though Morris will come back out onto the floor. Torrey Morris returns a sophomore, wears number 55 from Silver Spring, Tennessee. He'll be back in the game. He scored a bucket early. He'll be jumping with Damian Frey to start this overtime period. Won by Pittsburgh. It's Page. Wants to go by John Allen. Good first step. Fade away. No good. Rebounded by Frey. And he has been solid tonight. John Allen. Goes to the basket, lays it up and in, and he got fouled. Good quick recovery right there by Seton Hall to push it down the floor. Page has been a factor getting to the basket for Pitt at the other end. And he misses down that end in a quick delivery, and Allen very good at the left side of the basket, just giving it the one dribble and go to the basket. The foul on Brandon Knight, and he's got four. Three-point play by Allen. Zavetkis, hard drive, no good. Rebounded by Frey. Here come the Pirates. Well, Page came down hard on the right side of his body and holding his hand and arm a little bit. Barrett down low. Laid it up and in. What a diss that time. Page went out, too. He's holding that hand. That, see that position right there? He has not moved that hand from that position in about the last 20 seconds or so because he hurt it hurt himself down the other end of the floor came all the way down 
and has yet to move that hand, so we'll keep an eye on that. Could be a wrist. And here he goes. He goes up right now, and then bang, he comes down, has that kind of locked underneath, and you see it hit, he goes right to that position and went the entire length of the floor for that, that little series. So hopefully he'll be all right. Five points, Seton Hall lead. Long start in close for Seton Hall. Zivatkis, that's short, rebounded again by Frey. He's everywhere. Ten rebounds for Damian Frey. Now an opportunity for Seton Hall to milk the clock a little bit. I don't think you want to do it a real slow down here. You still want to be aggressive and look for good opportunities. Good luck. Morton down on the low box. Turn around. No good. Rebounded by Zivatkis and a foul on Darius Lane. That's one you don't want to give up. You can understand Lane trying to trigger that basketball and slap it away. But that's his fifth. He fouls out. And Lane will finish with 10 points. Seven rebounds in his final appearance as a senior at Continental Airlines Arena. So it's been a war of attrition tonight. Four men have fouled out. It's been an edge to this game physically. You bring a uniform tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going in there. <laughs> Maybe you want to go in there and I'm bang only, somebody. No, I'm only going in if I can shoot. <laughs> no, oh, I forgot. That, no more of that other stuff. You were a finesse right, player. I'm too old for that. <laughs> Let's not get into that age thing. No, now. not at all. <laughs> Now, you love the overtime periods. I know that. Because... More shots. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you kidding? <laughs> More shots. Oh, boy. So, Zavatkis has an opportunity now to get Pittsburgh back within three. He uh, put them into the overtime with a huge three-pointer with 3.4 remaining. And now, the free throw. Gives him 13 points. He had only two at halftime. And he got the roll. So 14 points for Zavatkis. And now Mark McCarroll, the freshman, out of Queens, enters the game. Where's number 21 for Tory Morris? Three-point Seton Hall lead. Good movement away from the ball. Seton Hall, a lot of bodies. Good action, good screen so far. Barrett can't get loose. And Pitt will not give up penetration off the dribble. Barrett, long range three, in and out. Battle on the boards, comes up with it. Now, oh, Seton Hall got it. Pittsburgh had it. Actually, Pitt did a pretty good job there of blocking out. Whenever the ball hits the floor, you know you've at least done the first job of boxing out. Well, no one gathered it in, though. Yeah, Seton Hall can take a little time off the clock if they want. Frey turning, got hit, ball loose. Ah, good call. Good call right there. It's going to be a jump ball, I believe. Held ball, and it's going to be Seton Hall possession with 2.53 left. So when this ball comes down, Mike, it's impossible to tell who's making the contact and initiating the contact right there. Both of them are tied up, so I think that's the proper call. Well, they both got to the ball, look like, right. at the same time. Barrett deep in the corner, 15 to shoot, 2.50 left. Barrett pull-up jumper, short, and there's going to be a foul here. The Panthers on the defensive glass. Mark McCarroll whistled for it. So Damian Frey will go to the line again. He's had an outstanding night. 11 points, 11 rebounds, 4 of 5. Oh, no, he didn't get the roll. <laughs> All the fans along the baseline. <laughs> Give it a little body English, a little extra oomph. Frey, just a sophomore out of Huntington, Long Island. No, he didn't get that one either. And now Seton Hall came up with it again. A long possession down here. They're taking a huge amount of time off the clock, but still clinging on to this three-point lead. They've got to get something out of this to give themselves a little breathing room. But they had the ball here for over a minute in overtime without scoring. 
15 to shoot. It's interesting sometimes. We'll see if they can get a good shot off here if they're waiting it out. Barrett nearly lost it. In yep. traffic falls down. It's a traveling violation. And Barrett looks like he's hurt a little bit. Tripped up on the feet of Brandon Knight. Trying to make something happen going to the basket. Loses the ball there. That's a walk. Before even... Knight may have hit him with the left foot, left knee a little bit, but that was after the walk. And the, the walk actually caused the contact, so that's a good call from the officials. Only two field goals have come from Seton Hall, and Julius Page is back in, still in pain. You can see him wincing. He landed on his wrist in his last possession, had to sit down for a minute. And now if you're Allen, you want to make sure if he touches the ball, you force him to use his right hand. Brandon Knight, under two minutes remaining. Puts up a long-range three. Oh, what a tough shot from Brandon Knight. Well, he was looking for a call also against the elbow. There you see him looking at the official, wondering why the call wasn't made. Well, that's a big-time answer, though, wasn't it? Off balance. And Knight now has four three-pointers in this game. Tied at 66. Marcus Toniel. Hard drive, lost it, turned it over. Got himself into trouble. Picked up that dribble and dribbled right into the corner. An opportunity, once you pick it up along the baseline like that, the baseline closes in on you, as does the defenders. 16 points for Brandon Knight, including a very difficult three-point field goal. Off balance, going the wrong way. And Knight has tied it up. You know, Knight was going to his left also and dribbling across. And watch how quickly he gets into this shot. Barrett gets hung up just a little bit. But the ability to float to the left and drop the shot straight on, pretty good move. Miami over Providence tonight in Rhode Island, 79-65. So 18th ranked Miami, along with Pittsburgh, both in the top 25. Pittsburgh being challenged tonight in overtime, tied up with Seton Hall. 105 left. Barrett isolated on Brandon Knight. Well, he's been taking over this basketball game in the big time opportunity situations. Spinning, floating, got it to go, Brandon Knight. 18 for him. Uh, nice tip there by Knight also. And maybe Barrett over the top. A tough break there for Seton Hall. Well, Knight has really stepped up, hasn't he, in the overtime? And he's also stepped up at the end of regulation. And another little clear out for him. And he just goes right by Barrett with the swing and the spin and gets his shoulders headed towards the basket. Once he clears Barrett, then you start looking for a next guy stepping in. Good answer from Knight. Let's see what he can do at the line. That is a very difficult shot by Brandon Knight. Now at the line, he's got the free throw, too. 69-66, Pittsburgh with 48 seconds remaining. The only bad part of his game is the line. He shoots at 44%. I almost have to double-check that number. I think it was a misprint. Yeah, exactly. But it's not. He makes one of two. Three-point game. Seton Hall had a five-point lead in overtime. Andre Barrett, no good. Javadkis rebounds, and Pittsburgh can run the clock out. They call timeout. Well, they just wanted to spread the court, I believe. Ben Howland, I don't think he wanted to call timeout right there. You want to keep the clock moving. Seton Hall, once again, settling for that long shot. You know, 35 seconds left in a basketball game is an eternity. I still think you want to take that one to the basket, look for a fouling opportunity, stop the clock, and then turn this into a stretch this game out as long as you can. Brandon Knight has led his team in scoring 14 times this year, and he's doing it again tonight. He's got 19 points. Seton Hall has the only timeout remaining. The possession arrow is Pittsburgh's way. And the Hall has hit another lull in their offense. They missed their last five. 
committed three turnovers in the overtime after leading by five. And this is where, from the Seton Hall perspective, they're going to have to, with the basketball being entered, you have enough time to go for a steal for about three or four seconds, and then you want to play the fouling game at the other end of the floor. If you're pit, you want to be talking about situations and also reminding your team of the timeout situation. But also, and more importantly, I think right now is making sure they understand they have the possession arrow in their favor. If they get tied up, don't just throw it and get panicky. Try to hold on to the ball and you, re you regain possession. Well, that's like having another timeout when they don't have right. one. Exactly. If you use it to your advantage, so you have to be smart with it. But what they want to do now is spread the court. If you're Seton Hall right now, you got to look at the numbers. We just touched on Brandon Knight at 44% from the free throw line go for the steal and maybe put him back at the line. Raheem Carter has checked in. Where's number 14? He'll be guarding Julius Page. They inbound it tonight. He's loose. Ahead it comes to Chad Johnson. How much time are you going to let go off the clock? You want to be fouling about five seconds ago. And John Allen steps in and fouls Julius Page. Fourth on Allen. And Julius Page will go to the line. He's had a strong second half. Well, the other thing, too, to keep in mind, 83% free throw shooter, but he is, came out of the game about two minutes ago with his right arm bothering him. We'll see if that has any effect on the lefty shot. It does not. So Julius Page, 11 in the second half, 13 in the game. It's just stepping through an injury right there. Your weak side hand should not be a real factor in shooting the ball except for guiding. Nice touch. The shooters touch. Two big free throws to give them a five-point lead. Page got them both. Five-point advantage. Barrett driving. Goes up. No good. Rebounded by Seton Hall. Carter got fouled. So with 13.2 remaining, Seton Hall can get back within a three-point field goal. Well, Seton Hall's just trying to keep as much time in the clock as possible. And the Pirates will call their final timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. Louis Orr just wants to go over some situations right now. You get two on the board. You want to go for that steal on the inbounds pass and then go for the foul quickly. Take a look at the timeout situation. And once again, as a reminder, the Two shots are made right here. Pitt has to keep reinforcing the fact that they do have that possession arrow in their favor. It really comes down, though, to Carter knocking a couple back right here. Pittsburgh on a 10-0 run. We're down by five to start the overtime. Ben Howland's team, which has had just a tremendous year, trying to hang on. They're eighth ranked in the country. Now, Carter has not played at all tonight. He's a senior. From Long Branch, New Jersey, went to Monmouth and cannot get that one to go. Yeah, nothing tougher than coming in after sitting for, you know, two, an hour, two hours and change on the bench and then having to go to the line and try to knock some back. And he misses both of them. Ball is loose. And Seton Hall will get possession of it. So the Pirates, 11 of 21 from the line tonight. And that hurt them. Carter inbounds way in the corner. The shot no good, and Page has the rebound, and Pittsburgh is going to hang on with 4.3 remaining to defeat Seton Hall. This is a team, Pitt and Ben Howland, that have learned to win. You know, you can just see it coming down the stretch. There was no quit on the road. And they've fought back recently against West Virginia and Syracuse on the road. So it's a team that's growing into themselves, and it's a good time to be confident, isn't it? Big East tournament around the corner. They have been three and three in games decided by five points or less this year. Seton Hall only one and seven in close ones, and that's part of the reason. They are 12 and 15, going on 12 and 16. Julius Page has them both, and Pittsburgh closes on a 12-0 run. And they will win it. The Panthers showing why they are ranked eighth in the country. Win it 73 to 66.
in overtime. Well, once again, Seton Hall kind of hung around there, and they did a great job, you know, overall. You know, team that on paper pit number eight in the country. They really had to fight on Seton Hall's home floor on senior night here, but Pitt really learning how to win. It took a three-pointer by Donata Savachkis with three seconds left in regulation to force overtime, and then they erased a five-point Seton Hall lead in overtime to win it by seven. Pittsburgh 73, Seton Hall 66. For Jim Spinarkel, I'm Mike Crispino. Thanks for joining us. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television.